Today's episode of Rockin' H Woodshop is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash rockin'h. What's up, guys? Welcome back. This is Sanders. They've been all over YouTube as of late, showing you how to make a freestanding unit completely out of wood and a spare motor. Well, I'm going to show you how to make one for less than three bucks using a tool that you may already own. Stay tuned. Now what we're going to do is make a disc sanding station completely used on the table saw. We're basically going to take the place of the saw blade and make our own sanding disc with two sides, 160 grit and 150 grit. This is perfect for anything that you have that's fairly long because the table surface on a sanding station that's uh, completely dedicated isn't very big to hold like a long picture frame uh, or basically anything that's of size bigger than that table. So you have to come up with some kind of jig table to rig up on that unit to be able to have that surface area for stability. Well the table saw's already got that, so why not utilize the blade, well I should say something in place of the blade, to make a sanding disc. That's what we're going to do. We've taken a piece of wood roughly about 11 inches by 11 inches and what we're going to do is make a 10 inch sanding disc. As you can see, I've measured in 5.5 inches from this side and 5.5 inches from this side to find center. Then I measured five inches from the center point to right here, which is halfway between 10 inches. So we're going to drill a hole right here. Now we come over here to the bandsaw. Now, some of you may not have a bandsaw, and this may be a little difficult to do, but Steve Ramsey actually shows you a way to cut a circular pattern using your table saw and a sliding sled. This is just the quickest and easiest way that uh, you can make a circular disc. Uh, what I've done here, is I've taken a piece of plywood that is a little bit longer than the table itself and it overhangs off the side edge here and I've put a couple of stop blocks on three sides which will make it register in the exact place that I want. This line represents where the blade cutting surface starts and this uh, pinhole right here is the five inches from the edge that's going to make our 10 inch disc and I've got a little ring shank nail going through the hole that I made and that is going to pivot on the hole that we made for our piece. Would you like a pizza pie? Uh, hey, yeah. As you can see with my blade off, my piece of half inch plywood that I cut a circle on is a perfect 10 inch diameter circle. So what we're gonna do now is take a Forstner bit of 5 eighths of an inch and make a hole that will accept the arbor in the table saw. Now that we've done a test fit with the hole, we're gonna take some 60 grit sandpaper that's non-adhesive back and some spray adhesive we're going to leave one side exposed here, make sure that there is no dust whatsoever on it. That way the sandpaper will sit flat. Give it a good spray, as well as the paper. Now some of you probably thought, oh, he screwed up, sandpaper won't cover a 10 inch disc. Well, it can actually. Once I cut off the circle, the leftover piece perfectly covers the leftover amount of the disc. Now we're just going to do the other side same way. Now we just put it in the table saw. All right, now all I've done here is just a makeshift tabletop. Now, you don't have to use this. You can actually put a zero clearance insert in here that's just the right size for your disc. And then you've got the entire tabletop, which is probably what I'll do eventually. I just didn't have the time. So I'm going to show you what we can do here and then uh, what we can do with the miter jig. I made this picture frame about two years ago and I accidentally undercut it so I ended up scrapping the whole thing. But as you can see it's a piece of oak and walnut and the oak is thinner than the walnut laid inside of a groove that goes down the length of the walnut. And this acts as the, the picture frame mat 
so I didn't have to cut one. So it was just an idea that I was toying around with. But I cut these miters on the miter saw and they weren't quite perfect, so whenever I went to put it together, they were gapped. So this is one thing you can do with a disc sanding station, is to fine tune your miters. Now that looks like a great joint. Now the other cool thing about having this sanding disc in your table saw is that you can make angled sanding as well by tipping your blade to as much as 45 degrees and then doing your sanding that way. And the other cool thing is it's two-sided. So once you get done working on the 60 grit side, come over to the other side of the table saw and work the 150 grit. You can put whatever grit you want on this disc. It can be 220 grit here. It could be 60 grit or it could be 120 grit. I mean, it's, it, the possibilities are endless because you had two sides and it's out of wood. So you just peel off the other one with a little bit of mineral spirits, let it dry, spray on another coat of spray adhesive and put on another set of sanding discs. It's cool and it's cheap. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, another jig making episode. It seems like I'm making a lot of jigs this month, but uh, I've really enjoyed these past few weeks and uh, I've, I've made some great additions to the shop. Now, I want to remind you guys that I will be on the Summer's Woodworking Show tonight at 7 p.m. And I hope to join you on that broadcast. If you miss it, you can join us uh, on YouTube later and watch the entire one-hour link special. And we are going to be talking uh, in the beginning about uh, how we pick our background music for all of our videos. And then we're just going to yammer about every little thing that is involved woodworking. So it's going to be a cool thing. And I'm going to try and uh, make these a little bit more uh, frequent. So uh, it comes on every Saturday at 7 p.m. I hope to see you guys there. Please subscribe to Brian's channel. He's been doing this quite a while, and it's great fun to do. I've already done it once, and I can't wait to do it again. Until next time, guys, I hope to see you next week. Don't forget to check out Summer's Woodworking Show tonight at 7 p.m.